so I welcome you to the lecture series on introduction to cybersecurity and today our topic is malware sandbox and that is coming under basic dynamic analysis of malware okay so let's start what is sandbox what do you understand by the term sandbox so automated malware analysis system is known as sandbox that is a part of dynamic analysis system okay so sandbox is a kind of dynamic malware analysis system and this is one of the latest weapons in the arsenal of security vendors because this is dynamic and that is the plus point of it now why malware sandboxing you know Security professionals use malware sandboxing to test potentially malicious software. If any code is suspected to contain mal malware, and sandboxing is carried out to detect that, analyze and study its behavior and target endpoints. And this technique is a great alternative to our traditional signature-based malware defense systems in terms of rendering advanced malware protection for endpoints. And about the traditional signature-based malware defense systems, you guys already got it in my previous lectures of this ICS lecture series. Now, what are the goals of malware sandbox? A good Malware analysis sandbox has to achieve three important goals, and these goals are very important, so you have to note them down. First one is visibility, second one is resistance to detection, and third one is scalability. So, coming to first one, visibility. So, a sandbox has to see as much as possible of the execution of a program otherwise it might miss some relevant activity and cannot make solid deductions about the presence or absence of malicious behaviors so that is our visibility the parse goal that means the sandbox has to see as much as possible of the execution of a program then resistance to detection a sandbox has to perform monitoring in a fashion that makes it difficult to detect. Otherwise, it is easy for malware to identify the presence of the sandbox and in response after its behavior to evade detection. Got it? So second goal means resistance to detection means the sandbox has to perform monitoring in such a fashion that makes it difficult to get detected. Then third goal is scalability. And this goal captures the desire to run many samples through a sandbox in a way that the execution of one sample does not interfere with the execution of subsequent malware programs. Okay, means many samples being run in that sandbox and Execution of one is not going to hamper the other. Okay, so scalability means that it must be possible to analyze many samples in an automated fashion and that is the third goal of malware sandboxing. Now, how does malware sandboxing work? You know traditional signature-based malware detection techniques are reactive in their app. Commercial malware analysis tools devoid of malware sandboxing functionalities work by looking for signatures or patterns as identified in known occurrences of malware. On the other hand, sandboxing proactively detects, evaluates, and detonates code in a safe environment to determine its traits, hence, providing re reliable advanced malware protection for endpoints. That is the plus point of malware sandboxing. Now, 
we have different benefits out of malwares and boxing technology. So I'm going to note them one by one. So first one is testing any program code or software changes in a sandbox means that if any malicious entities are detected, they can be dealt with less stress during and after the test as no real harm happens to the host environment. The changes can then be safely deployed without the possibility of detecting any more vulnerability. This is the first benefit of malware sandboxing technology. Second, without sandboxing, any unknown application containing intrusive elements can get unlimited access to user data and resources on the network. So that's why we need sandboxing. And that is the second benefit. Third, Mailer sandboxing proves to be especially revolutionary in detecting stealthy malware and protecting the network and systems from zero-day exploits. Of course, there is no guarantee that this technique will evade zero-day threats, but it provides an excellent approach in that direction. Moreover, since these threats need a lot of research, Security analysis can contain them in the sandbox environment to conduct their investigation and analysis to identify the pattern. So this is the third benefit. And fourth benefit is that sandboxing capabilities act as counterparts to other security programs, including monitoring and virus detection programs. So that is the fourth benefit. Okay. So, these are the topics of today's lectures. First, we have started with what the definition of sandbox, then why malware sandboxing is needed, then what are the goals of the malware sandbox, and then we have gone through the benefits of implementing malware sandboxing technology. So, as a question for today's lecture, First question is that you need to define malware sandbox. Second question is that what are the goals of malware sandboxing technology? And you need to explain each of them. So comment your answers. Meet you in the next lecture. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.